Good morning. I'm Aaron Bowman W4 ARB and I am a CW guy. I like to operate CW and I like to record videos of it sometimes and share it with you here on YouTube. So thanks for joining this morning as I am about to uh, set up here and operate a Parks on the Air activation. In fact, I'm already set up, so I don't know why I said I'm about to set up because I already am. But today I am using different radio that you haven't seen in a while on my channel um, that is my oh trusty FT 817 this is just a it's a nostalgic radio for me I got my license in 2001 and uh, I was 11 and uh, this radio came out in 2001 and I remember right after getting my license just staring at the catalogs of how cool I thought the 817 was and how I wanted one so bad. So, when I got back into ham radio around COVID time, um, I'm an adult now, so I bought one, naturally. It's one of the, probably the second radio I got when I got back into it, and I don't regret it. This is one radio I will never sell. So, if it looks foggy, it's because foggy so anyway that's is what it is just wanted you to know it's not a video thing it's not that the video is just foggy it's actually foggy in fact it's kind of misting down a little bit as uh, the fog does its fogging thing I don't know how to describe that anyway it's also a little bit dim the Sun's just barely up it's before sunrise it's between dawn and sunrise and uh, Let's get on the air. You'll notice I'm also using a different key today. So this is the AF6L Spirit Key. I bought this key when I just started learning CW because I thought it looked cool. After I bought it, I didn't really love it that much once I started actually learning CW. And I haven't really used it. Well, this week, I dug it out of the drawer and uh, started using it a little bit because it's big. I mean, look at this thing. That's a big key. So, uh, you know, the good thing about how big it is, it's actually pretty light because it's aluminum, but um, it sits across the cup holders in my truck. So if I'm operating in the truck, like with my 891 and ATOS. This thing will sit in the console across the cup holders. And I can keep pretty good with it. So anyway, it's not a bad little key. I had it with me this morning, so I just decided to use it. I don't know if you can still get these things or not. I'll link the website for them in the description. I know the website's still up. I'll let you look if, you, if you're interested. It's not my favorite key in the world, but looks cool. Alright, I'm on 40 meters, 7.038, already called QRL once. I'm going to do it again, and jump on the air here in a moment. And I want to move up pretty quick to uh, 20 meters, 17, something like that, see if I can get uh, a little bit of DX in. So let's try to rack up about 10 contacts or so, maybe a little more, on 40, and then move on up. I'm using the MC750. It's the antenna. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Set up over yonder.
gear got a little weird there for a second. I don't think it was the key. I don't know what the heck is going on with this radio, man. Let's see if it's the key. Sorry, I got a bump for a second. up my iPad which is my camera so swap it real quick see if it's the key hope so
Yeah, signal came up. Cool. We're in business now. Yep, AF6L Spirit Key did not work out today. In case you're new here, I apologize for the traffic. This recreation area for Tuskegee National Forest is on highway, US Highway 29, uh, which is a rather busy highway, so. Uh, is what it is, the only picnic tables in Tuskegee National Forest. So, there you have it. So, I don't always carry spares of things. Glad I carried a spare key this morning. You know, I get why people do that. But I'm always pretty close to my house. And I don't activate for very long. So, I normally just bring one of everything. But I had I always have this key. This is my this is my key. And I threw that in the bag and it just didn't end up working out for me. Not sure why it's sticking. I'm being picked up by the RBN just fine, by the way. May just not be a lot of people hunting yet.
turning up my key or speed. Now that I know it was the key, now I want it back to my regular speed. That's loud. Good old Jake break. I had some deep QSB this morning.
Pectometers of this. Alrighty. Make sure I got it on my front antenna port here. Yep. Good, 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 good. Come on down here. I'm going to try to go to the same. This is 14.038. right back hey you know what maybe you'll find this interesting so here's my MC 750 right back here it's got a 40 meter coil in it right now so I'm gonna take that out See, more than likely it's probably about good SWR, might have to adjust an inch or two. It's got silk screen marks on the whip, so it says where 14 megahertz is. I pulled it to around there, took the 40 meter coil off, should be tuned to 20. Let's see. Alright, so I ended up pulling it up about another two inches. That's one to one. So we're good to go. I'm going to move this out of the way. Alright, right now, I am at one, two, three, four, five, six contacts only, so I've got to get four more before I go anywhere. Let's see what we can do. All right, all right. Already picked me up on the RBN.
that's a strong signal right there. That's nine plus. Puerto Rico. Thanks, Manuel. Wow. Slow morning. Checked the uh, band conditions supposedly are pretty bad today. Seems likely.
the slope. What the heck? Let's go to 17 meters. It's been a fun band lately. Been making some contacts on 17. Why not if it's gonna be slow anyway? All right, one to one. Just using the mark that's already on there. So 18, zero, eight, six. Like 100% sure I'm on my front antenna. Even though the STPR just read one to one, so pretty good indicator. IPO is off. We're good. I do have a narrow filter in this radio. They weren't that hard to find whenever I got it. There's a lot of trucks driving by this morning.
So I'm watching my spot over here on the Parks on the Air page. So if you turn on, if you're using CW and turn on the RBN, it'll toggle up here. You can see I've only been spotted once here on 17 meters so far. And that's by TI7W, and that was almost five minutes ago. And it was at 10 decibels, which is yeah, not great. I'm gonna do something fun. I have my 891 right here. I'm gonna swap in. Uh, we're up about 50 watts. See if it makes a difference. It should be interesting. I've never just swapped between QRP to not QRP on uh, an activation in the middle of it before. So I'm interested to see what happens. Theoretically, it shouldn't be that much different, really. But sometimes when band conditions are not great like today, um, a little bit of difference can go a long way. So maybe if I get a little bit of a boost from it, very well maybe worth my while. Because I still haven't gotten 10 contacts yet. Alright, so there's the 891. Here's the two together. It's like a nice little sibling pair there. 857 really is the sibling. Maybe 897. I don't know, whatever. Oh, look, I'm already in the ballpark. That says one to five. One point. One point five to one. I'd get that better. <coughs> there we go. <clears throat> I think this SWR meter is a little more accurate. All right, now let's see what happens. Receiver's quieter. It's nice. I mean, hands down, this is a more refined radio. It sounds better. Definitely sounds better. Side tone, receiver, speaker. It's bigger. So, bigger speaker helps, but, you know. Also having a memory cue, that's nice.
All right. You know what? Spots aren't any better. I've gotten one hit at four decibels, KP3 CW. So, um, still not getting it out really. I'm going back to 40 meters. Run 50 watts this time. Let me throw the coil back on. That we can get the contacts real quick. All right, I got the coil back on. And I'm at 7.0365. I got it to about a 1.7 to 1. I'm not really going to fool with it. Let's just make some contacts. I think we should be all right. Okay.
All right, we got some contacts rolling in now. All right, call it right there. <sighs> and a good old QRT. Let me go over here, my spot. Market QRT. Let's talk for a second. All right, fun times, lots of swaps on uh, this activation. So let's talk about it for a second. First, I started out with the Yezu FT817 and the AF6L Spirit Key. Um, and I've actually been enjoying this key lately. I'm, I'm not going to hold it against it. Uh, probably need to adjust it. It's been sitting in a drawer for a long time. Uh, contacts may be dirty. I mean, it's probably something simple. Keys are not very complicated of mechanisms, so there's not really that much that can go wrong. I'll check it and get it back going. Um, the Yaesu FT817. I love it. It's just a nostalgic radio. The side, town, side tone sounds terrible. It pops. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's unrefined to an extent but it's also from 2001 and was you know, revolutionary whenever it was in, uh, introduced so I love the 817 it's a workhorse of a radio it, it's a it really is a beast um, I don't think that QRP was the issue I think that when I went on 40 meters to begin with it was just after 6 a.m. and there just wasn't that many people um, hunting and then I rolled up to 20 and I think 20 and 17 both were pretty much just band conditions were dead. They weren't open yet. Um, I was hoping, what I was hoping for was I already had six contacts on 40. So I was hoping I could go up to 20. And a lot of times this time in the morning, uh, 20 will actually be open to Europe. And I was hoping that I could get into Europe and make you know, three or four good DX contacts to uh, wrap up the activation. And that works a lot of times today. Uh, it does not look like that was the case. So the only RBNs that I was being picked up um, were really so like some, um, I don't remember, TI-7W. Um, There's a Puerto Rico one. Um, and so it was all within, you know, pretty, pretty close circle. It wasn't getting anywhere near um, Europe. So that just wasn't working. I swapped in the 891. Uh, just to see if 50 watts would make any difference and get me over the pond. Uh, it didn't. So it didn't really make any difference. I'd, I had one spot on RBN um, on 
17 meters after I changed to the 891. So I don't think that made any difference. Uh, so then I went back to 40 meters because I saw there were some other parks on the air activators down on 40. And I figured that, uh, you know, it was a little bit later. Now it's 730. I figured folks were waking up, starting to get on the air, and it seems like that was the case. So uh, I was able to make several contacts there at the end on 40 meters. I could have stayed with the 817 on 40 meters. I think it would have done the exact same thing. I don't think the 50 watts had anything to do with it, but it's kind of neat to hear them side by side. I think the biggest difference as far as um, you know, operationally the 891 is definitely more refined. The audio on this thing is really nice and smooth. The side tone is smooth. Um, yeah, just listen to it for yourself. You can hear the difference. Uh, I think that's really the biggest difference other than obvious power. Um, you know, and this radio is just a lot newer. It's got you know, DSP and things, but I wasn't really using any of that. Um, I did have it on narrow. But that's really the only thing that I was using. You know, it, I did change uh, for a weak station. I put it on, uh, I turned on the width setting and cranked it down to, I think, 150, 200. I do that sometimes, pull out some weak signals. The filter that I have in this 817 here is a 300 hertz filter anyway. So, uh, and, and honestly, this thing's filter is probably a little bit better than the DSP filters as far as yeah, re rejection. Uh, I, <laughs> listen to me acting like I know what I'm talking about. I don't, I'm really not that good with that kind of thing. Um, I can tell you that this sounds quieter noise floor wise than the 817. I don't know if that's good or not. It could just be that the uh, all signals are quieter on this than the 817. Heck, I don't know. Um, either way, they're both great radios. Just a slow activation because band conditions do kind of suck today. So, hey, if you're getting out, if you get out today and uh, operate, or you're operating at home, good luck to you. I think you do fine. You know, band conditions are band conditions. It's just another variable. You'll still make contacts. Might take a little bit more time, a little more patience, but you can still make contacts even when band conditions aren't great. With that, I will sign off and say 73. I appreciate you watching and joining this morning. Hopefully I didn't bore you to death with, I think, 17, 18 contacts in an hour. So sorry about that, uh, but hope you enjoyed it anyway. This is how uh, operating in the field goes sometimes. Sometimes it's really fast. You can make contacts in 10 minutes. Sometimes it takes an hour. Both ways are fun because outside, in some fresh air, operating ham radio, it's a good day. 73 from W4ARB in Tuskegee National Forest. See you in the next activation video, or if I do another kind of video, whatever video that is. Thanks. Catch you then.